Hey everyone, Techni here with not really a review today. As you can see, we got a little bit of a project here today. We took out the old Razer Huntsman Mini. You can kind of add some of this stuff up, I guess, you know, and see what we're going to try to do here. You all know my opinions on the ever so hyped up Huntsman Mini. An overpriced, clanky keyboard, you know. Now, the one with the red linear switches, as I said in my review, was much better than the purple one. So we're not going to be messing with the purple one here. We're going to be messing with the red one, but it was still a little bit clanky because those little bars on each key with these Razer linear switches right there, the optical switches. So we're going to try to reduce that. Also, what I'm going to try to do is include or, or implement a little bit of heft within. I got some rubber dampeners here, and this is fairly thick stuff. So hopefully I can line it in the bottom right there, add a little heft to it and eliminate some of that rattle. A lot of you have been asking in the comments, and this has honestly been in the back of my head as well. Can we improve? the Huntsman Mini. Now, of course, I'm 100% right here that you should not have to do this to a $130 board at all. So I'm not saying go buy this board and then do this. Absolutely ridiculous. But again, I have the board and I wanna try to make it better. And if you have it, if you're a Razer fan and you're just gonna pick it up no matter what, hopefully we can correct this together here. So anyways, I'm trying this out with you guys. So let's see what we can do. All right, so as we can see right there, clear as day, there is an improvement. It's a great improvement. 
Eh, I don't know, it's decent, it's definitely improved. As you saw, I couldn't get the space bar really that much better. As you can hear, still a little clanky there, but check this out. Like that rattle we had before? Almost non-existent now. And the trick to this is with these optical switches, you press them down, that metal bar goes forward. When you let it go, whenever you're gaming, going fast with your WASD, that, that metal bar comes back and bounces the back of the key, and then again makes it vibrate right there. So we lube the top of the switch, as you saw, and then down at the bottom right there, just to, again, prevent any of that bounce whenever it backfires and hits the back of the key there. And as you saw, I did put this rubber lining in there. I had to cut it out and fit it down there because you saw those little gaps, and I lined it with some basic shelf liner to kind of keep it in there. Now, they're pretty much like dampened switches, silent switches already, so I wasn't looking for that. What I was looking for for is just to put a little loft and a little girth into it and you truly feel it now. It, again, you saw it came in at like a, what a pound and two ounces or something. We gained a couple ounces right there. So it almost feels like ducky one too many quality now. You know, again, it just has a little loft. It doesn't feel like a chintzy little toy, but not a massive amount. I still wish we could have got a little bit more weight on this guy. Now, one other thing I think we should have done to really kind of complete it, but I just honestly didn't want to do it. That is bust out the ever so trusty flex seal. You all remember I used this in my first custom board, right? But what I think would have really made this complete here is use the flex seal. You saw whenever I was pulling the keycaps out, the switches came out pretty stinking easy. So what I think would have completed it, again, pull out all switches and then flex seal the top of this plate right there. Number one, it would reduce that metal slap down to kind of make a whole rubber dampening right there. But what also it would do is kind of fill in the gaps right there. Cause that is the worst thing about this keyboard besides the metal bars on every switch. But the switch in here moves all the way around the housing. Like it's not just the keycap that moves, it's the entire switch. So again, if we slapped effect flex seal or probably even paint, you know what I mean? It would have just kind of enclosed those gaps a little bit and really put those switches in there solid. So. Again, I just didn't want to stink and do that, but I think that would have really completed it here. So all in all, what do we say? Um, improvement, yes. Worth it? I guess if you have the board, I would say yes, do it. This tuba lube is what, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, something like that. This stuff's like five bucks or something. I'll put all the links right down in the description. So I say if you have the board, 100% do it. Quick little hour project and done. As you all saw in my previous lube video, I said I would never lube a switch again, but I was really curious about this board again with how horrible it was before, you know? Um, I don't really think it would improve too much on the clicky version, because again, you don't have that dampener on a switch. You can't really eliminate that bounce back. I'm not too sure. That's just my thoughts right there. But again, I go right back to the beginning where I just, $130 board, I just Straight up, don't think it's worth it. You know, I shouldn't have to sit here and spend an hour job on it. You know what I mean? I know we do this to custom boards and stuff that cost even more, but still with it being that bad and still not perfect, meh, your call. But anyways, thank you so much for stopping by watching this quick little project right here. I hope I was able to help you out some way or another right here. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for some future tech videos. Hey, I hope I catch you in the next one. Bye now.